Hey guys, Gaming Off The Grid here. Last night marked the re-release of this bad boy, the NES Classic Edition. We were able to snag one, and we got our hands on an extra controller. Back when these first came out, both of these were nearly impossible to find. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at the re-release version. Is it the same thing as last time? And for those of you who've been living under a rock, we are going to bring you up to speed. We're going to see what's inside the box, and let you know if you need to get out and pick one of these up for yourself. And we're going to drink some beer. Today we're drinking a quadruple ale from a brewery in Illinois. This beer is called When I Have Time. All right, sit back, relax, pour yourself a beer if you care to, smash that subscribe button, and stay tuned for this episode of Gaming Off The Grid. All right, I'll be back. The NES Classic Edition has returned. Last night, we went out at midnight to pick this thing up. Actually, it was like 10.30. Yeah, it was 10.30, because we were expecting a line. And, to be honest, there was no line. Well, can you have a line with one person? Well, point A to point B. No, there's no, there's no, <laughs> I, I don't think you can. <laughs> the hype train has derailed, I have a feeling. Yeah. What do you think? I would agree. The first time this thing came out, it was gone immediately. People waited in line for hours. No one could get it. Scalpers were selling it for way too much. But this time, nothing. Like, it's still on the shelves. Yeah. Uh, right before we shot this video, uh, there were uh, a lot of stores in the area that had quite a few on hand. You know, 15, 20 units I, I was seeing at pretty much every retailer in the area, which is a great thing. We want all Nintendo fans to be able to get their hands on this, and I think it speaks to the fact that when Nintendo initially said that they, they miscalculated the demand for this thing, a lot of people were like, oh, this was their intention. Maybe it was, but I, I really think they did. Because they delivered on their promise, they, they, they said with the Super Nintendo Classic, that anybody that wanted one would be able to find one. We have a lot of gamers as friends. I don't know anyone who really, really wants one who doesn't have one. Well, when we went out last night, there was one in the case we could have bought. And from the early signs, I think they're going to deliver on their um, word that this one will be more readily available. Yeah, I think so too. I think anyone that wants one should go out and get it now. Don't wait. I mean, it's not high demand, but still, you don't want to press it. Yeah, they're saying uh, throughout the remainder of this year, the SNES Classic and this should be um, available and in production. Scalpers out there, they are at it again, dude. I got on Craigslist, 150 bucks in the town that we're saying there's 20 available at every store. That's over double the price of this unit. If you're a scalper, go drown somewhere, seriously. And if you're watching the video, stop because it is so frustrating i cannot stand people like this like if you want one or two as a backup okay if you're getting a one as a gift for a friend okay but like piling them up like 20 in a picture on ebay and craigslist and and just gouging people yeah, that's just not fair and especially when they're still on the shelves like seriously you you won the first round nintendo's gonna win this round just stop already Everyone's going to be able to get one who wants one. I truly, truly believe that. And if we're wrong, we're wrong. But I think Nintendo's going to deliver on their promise. One thing that I was really interested in is this version, or the re-release, is it the same as the first version? Because I got it the first time around, you didn't. Yeah, so didn't. you picked one up this time. There's one question that a lot of people are, are really uh, wondering about. The, is It's the cord length. Everyone was wondering if they were going to make it longer. Which, if I was Nintendo, I would say, yes, we were going to. <laughs> but, I opened the box when I got it. The freaking cord is a foot long. It's not even close to what the original cords were. I don't understand this. Yeah, um, I, don't, I don't get it. Like, are you supposed to be standing right next to the TV playing it? <laughs> Apparently, everybody has big screen TVs now. And yeah, let's nestle up, you know, a foot away from it. Yeah, and just really no, fry the retinas right out of our skull. TV. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand, but there is a workaround. Uh, you got two uh, extenders or patch cables. Yeah, I found a pack of two for 10 bucks on Amazon, and I think they're like 10 feet long, so like, 
I can play comfortably on my couch, yeah. which is how it's meant to be played. I exactly. We did notice one subtle difference. Yeah, and this, I don't know how you noticed this because I didn't notice, but if you're a collector and you have the first edition of this, people will know because it's a big, this is explained. Well, the, the Nintendo seal, that quality seal, the gold starry looking thing. On the first version, it was over in the right hand bottom corner. At least the one that I got was. The one that you picked up, it's moved over to the left side of the box and in the place of where the old one was is like an E for everyone plus 10 or, or 10 plus logo. It's very small. We looked everywhere else. You mentioned maybe a little color differentiation. Yeah, I think that the newer one is more like crisp and like darker, like the blacks are darker. And I don't know if that's because it's new and freshly printed and the old one is old. I don't know, but that's just what I noticed, so I thought we should talk about it. That one little differentiation of where that print seal is may be that one thing moving forward that collectors identify, hey, this was the first run edition. Um, you know, 10, 15 years from now, that could be a, a selling point on something that's complete in box. Yeah, especially because the first edition was so hard to find, and if you still have it in box, woo! Yeah, it could be, a, it could be something. So who knows, but I haven't heard anybody talk about that yet. So we wanted to make sure we brought it to you for sure. Now, I'm really curious your beer thoughts. Yeah, I, uh, this is weird and I hope I don't super disappoint you because you wouldn't tell me anything about this beer and you brought it in from out of town. You picked it up in Joliet, right? Yeah, Joliet, Illinois. I was coming back from Michigan and we stopped at a brewery on the way home and I was like having some of their beers and I noticed like on the menu, they had four packs available and I was like, oh, Belgium quad, done. It's good, there, but it's not great. It's uh, pretty bland for Belgian quads, I would say. There's a, a little bit of an alcohol burn, which usually Belgian quads are a higher alcohol content, but they do a great job of kind of masking that with their flavor profile. And it's hit me on the uh, back end with every swallow I got, you know, down the down the pipes. I can feel it still um, as I'm talking. It's a very like clear beer when I hold it up. I don't see any particles like as far as like a lot of Belgian quads are very organic and unfiltered and yeah, things like that. One, I think this one's definitely filtered. It has to be. Yeah, there or something. I, I don't know. It's good. Like, is this better than you know a lot of things at your average run of the mill place that you can get on draft? <laughs> yes, absolutely. But comparatively, I mean, we just had that Omni Gang uh, three philosophers. Three philosophers. Holy hell. It was, yeah, it was just one of our last episodes, and it's not even, this is not even close. Like, they're not even in the same league. Decent, but not great. What do you think? See, I uh, tried this at the brewery when we were there, because I was like, oh, I'm going to try it, and I'm not going to tell them my thoughts, because I want it to be an honest opinion. And I would agree with you. When I took a first sip, I had high hopes, Belgian Quad, and I was like, man, this is kind of bland and, like, simple. And there's not much going on. I was kind of disappointed. Yeah. I mean, my initial like swig of this, I was really happy because we pounded a couple high lifes to get ready <laughs> for this episode. So we set the bar low, you know, like we typically do. Um, before you drink anything good, just so you know as a viewer, the strategy is start at the bottom and then introduce something that's supposed to be good and it's going to be I really think, good. I think most people do the opposite. Yeah. I think people start with the good beer and then with the bad beer because at the end it doesn't matter. Yeah, but I, I kind of <laughs> like doing the other way around. I want to try more from this brewery because I hate saying anything bad about a small brewery. I tried this one and then I tried an IPA. The IPA they had was really good and the food, they had food there and it was really good too. I think if you roll through Juliet, Illinois, you stop in and see uh, Migraine, Migraine, Migraine brewery. brewery. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really good. Okay, so should people pick it up? Ah, uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, it comes with 30 games. It was 60 bucks, HDMI ready. It only comes with one controller, but I have two. Um, yep. the, the game selection's pretty sweet. Some of the games are all right, but overall, yes. Yeah, I mean, we, we're not doing this episode as a full review of this system. There's a bazillion videos out of, uh, as far as that goes. But if you're a Nintendo fan, or even an average fan, pick this up. For 60 bucks, you cannot beat this price. It's easy, you don't have to download ROMs, you don't have to install them on anything, you can plug it in and you can play it. The game selection. 
for the average gamer, it's fantastic. Yes, I, I do question, why did they pick Simon's Quest Castlevania 2 over Castlevania 3? I have no idea. Why did they put Super C on here, Super Contra, instead of Contra? I have no idea. But overall, for, for what it is, a plug and play, this is a fantastic product, and you need to get out and pick one up. Is If you see it on the shelf, grab it, go home, and have a good time playing some games. It introduced save states as well. Yeah, which is awesome. Yes, I know one of your biggest things is you want to beat Gradius yeah. by yourself. Once we get done with this episode, I'm going to go home, plug this... I almost said this fucker. <laughs> I'm gonna you just go did. <laughs> I'm going to go home and plug this thing in, and I'm going to sit down and... Beat Gradius. Yeah, and with save states, it's a little easier, but it's still hard as fuck. Yeah, Gradius <laughs> is. Oh. Yep. Uh, I'm addicted. Yes. So subscribe. Hit the subscribe button below. We're just growing this thing. We appreciate you watching. A little shorter episode today, but we wanted to really touch on this topic. Um, keep drinking, keep gaming, and we'll see you next time on Gaming Off the Grid. We also snagged an X oh, fuck an it. Xbox controller. Yeah. <laughs> fucking lights of sleep. <laughs> Don't go down, dude. Just <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Okay. Is the mic on? Yep, good. Okay. Who's mic? Hey guys, gaming off the grid here. Last night marked the re-release of this bad boy, and these were in the frame. Okay. Surprise! And if you've been living under a rock and you had... Oh, 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 oh. God, I can't do it. I just can't. Okay. <laughs> and the initial... <sighs> okay. Hey guys, Gaming Off The Grid here.